It's going up. We got to buy. You say, well, it's at the top. Guys, yeah, the reason I didn't succeed trading for two straight years is that's all I ever did. Hey, hey, hey. Every single time the market went, anybody like this? Market goes up, 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 you're like, oh, it's gonna go down, I'm gonna sell it. There's a DeLorean chat room I'm in. I was, I was reading through their Facebook message this morning. I almost, almost made me croak. They're trying to sell Bitcoin right now. And I'm, I'm positive they'll get burned. You have to understand, first and foremost, what the trend is. So if you went to look at the Dow, anybody seen the chart of the Dow recently? And believe it or not, there are still people trying to sell it. If you were in my live room the other day, I made a pretty good little joke at them. Every single time the market gets to the top, specifically in here, oh, it hit the same level twice, it's resistance, it's going down. But in my live room, what were we doing? We were trying to get measurements to get long in some sort of position. We were trying to buy it. Along with understanding how to manage risk, this is important. And if we go to this side, this is called bearish. If the market's here right now, what do you think? Should look to buy or sell? Look to sell. Now, when you look to sell or look to buy, do you buy right there at that level? At this level? Now, this question is kind of, you know, it's up for debate. Some of you might say, yeah. Now, if your goal is I don't know, maybe that chart is Apple. Maybe your goal is to hold it for the next 20 years. Who cares? You could buy it right now, it doesn't matter to you. But if your goal is to be in the trade today, probably have to rethink that. So what are you waiting for to happen? Some sort of pullback. <laughs> Some sort of pullback. And the reason I give you this drawing, I know it's simple, but at the end of the day, this is what the purple zone is all about. We're trying to find opportunities on a pullback in any given market where we can now buy here or sell here. And in here, that's what you call consolidation. Because at the end of the day on the left side, are there more buyers or sellers here? Buyers. Yeah, buyers. More buyers or sellers on the downtrend? Sellers. But in here, it's hard to get a grasp. Now I'll teach you one technical term trend continuation that will help you. Oftentimes what happens is folks will not zoom out of their chart enough. And they see this, but if they just zoomed out a little bit more, they realize something. The market was heading up prior. Hear me closely. When the market is consolidating, the easiest way to try to get an edge in the market and determine what is gonna happen after consolidation is to know what was going on before. So if the market is going up and then it starts going sideways, the odds are, statistically speaking, it's going to continue higher at some point. The question is when. And it's going to bounce around, bounce around. And it could be for a day, could be a week, could be a month, could be a year. Depends on what you're trading. It's going to bounce around. But odds are, if the market was bullish, consolidated. And then heads higher. So if you guys are looking at Tesla, many times you've seen this. Sit, 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 and you don't hear about it in the news for a while, and then suddenly you see the headline like, boop. Or Bitcoin, same thing. It was kind of like quiet the last few weeks. All those guys posting about their Bitcoin portfolios, it was like quiet. And then today it's loud again, everybody's posting about it, oh, everybody's happy. It consolidated. What was the direction of it prior to the consolidation? It was going up, and then it continued. And so when we focus in here now, I'm going to redraw it. We now start building what I call your case for entry. So let's take a bullish market, for example. Market's coming up, coming up. Okay, it's here. We all are starting to agree we're looking to do what? Now, here's the question. When? That is what the purple zone sequence trading is all about. Determining a, a literally to the pip pinpointed spot we look to buy. So here's how I do it. And this is obviously on a drawing, and then we're going to hit the charts later. When the market starts to pull back, what you're watching for is the market to stop pulling back. So the first thing you have to have in your head is, I have to wait for the market to pull back. Okay, the market's now pulled back. 
you want to say stop. Once it has stopped, now is your time to create a purple zone trade and start to try to identify that zone. And how that happens is it's in an uptrend. The pressure's up. Suddenly the market starts working, starts pulling. What you're watching for is actually the market to go again to the downside. Not once, but twice. And when that happens, this, you're going to hear about this a lot today, becomes what we call origin point. That is now where all of our work, if you will, begins. At the origin point. That is now the top of the market. And we can look at really any chart and we can try to find this. And some charts you're not going to be able to identify it because it may be sideways. Some charts you will. We identify an origin point. The market comes down, hits a level. Then it comes up, comes back up here, and it holds. The key you need to identify is right here. Right there. When the market goes again down and breaks that first pullback. Because at this time, now what we have is the most classic setup in my book. It's called a three-leg sequence. Three-leg sequence. Three-leg sequence. Three, 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 three. You got to remember that. Now, it starts from origin. Come down here. Can you guess what I identify that first low as? One. One. Comes up. What do you think I identify as? Two. Starts to work its way down. We are looking to buy at point three. That is our goal, buying at point three. Now here's the question and here's the kicker. Where is point three? And that's what we are going to learn today. How do we find point three? Because the moment we know right there, I'm not going to teach you how to do it yet, but we're going to be able, by the end of today, you're going to be able to know exactly where point three is. And so now that we've identified that red line as point three, we now start setting up alerts, pending orders, different things in our, in our broker and our trading platforms to tell us when price has now come down, we're ready to buy. Now, why is this powerful? Because this is actually completely separate from a four-step process. This is teaching you guys how to identify the overall market. And guess what you can do in here? If you have an overall zone, I'll teach you, and it's going to be purple, and it's going to be pretty, and it's called the purple zone for a reason. If that's your zone, guess what you can do? Literally anything you want. You could, try, you could look for only four-step process setups in there now. You could go over to any of the strategies on your wall, and you're looking for buy alerts or something from their strategy. You are now creating a zone that has a higher probability of eventually bouncing and heading higher. Early this week, the market was going down on Euro dollar here. Not that one example, but earlier, it was going down, 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 down. We gave out on my spreadsheet, the pending order on Monday. Market hit that zone. Within 20 pips, it started to turn. It started to head higher. Now, would you have had to just trade off the purple zone? No. You get a bullish five minute hyperdrive. Uh oh. You're building a case for entry. And as long as you're building a case for entry, you've got this purple zone, you've got this strategy, your one to two is the rest. And I can't point that out enough. One to two risk to reward ratio every single time.